Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So today is going to be a weird day because it's the first time I'm attempting the Automation campaign, I think, ever at this point. I've got like 275 hours in this game, something like that, but I've done it all in the car designer, basically the sandbox mode of this game. That's where all of my vehicles are made, but today is the day that I'm going to be trying the light campaign. I'm in 4.2 alpha, I guess is what it is. It keeps getting updated, so things are probably going to be different by the time you see this video. I think they're planning on doing another update in the next few days anyway, so who knows if this save file is going to last. Automation has always been a weird game in my mind because the devs seem to put a lot of focus and emphasis on the campaign, which is fine, obviously that's the part of the, the game that they're most interested in, but it seems to me that the majority of the player base is, is about here in the car designer, maybe here in the engine designer as well, but campaign is like a very small f fraction of the community. Uh, at least from my perspective, but I want to see what it's all about. I'm g I'm willing to give it a chance. Uh, I'm a little bit scared, but we should be able to figure it out together. So let's go. All right. So I've just hit new game, and we need to make a company name. I'm interested to see what the random ones are. We got Brimstone Edge Motorworks. That's actually not a bad name. I'm guessing that it's just choosing them from a list, though. If it was totally random, that would be even better. I've decided to go with Fluxington Motor Cars because it sounds very sophisticated. I'm thinking I'm going to try to specialize my vehicles in like one specific category, and that is two-door convertible sports cars. And <laughs> we'll see how well that goes. Probably not very well. So I, I was watching the tutorial. This tutorial is out of date, but the most recent one basically says that these countries are the easiest to start in. So we're going to start here in Gasmia. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing these things right. I'm, I'm not going to start in 1946. I'm going to start in 1975 because I don't want to start in 1946. That seems a little bit too far back. Uh, but when it comes to the difficulty, I had thought about this while I was watching the video. Like, maybe I should just go super casual. But I'm going to try easy. Okay, we're going to try easy. <laughs> not totally casual, but uh, not difficult either. Mostly because I have no clue what I'm doing. There are uh, advanced settings as well, but again, I'm sure that this is more for people who actually have played the campaign before and they want to tailor their experience to their needs. Like the reality is, I, I don't really care about score, I just care about having a company that stays afloat, at least moderately. So let's get started and see how this goes. Uh, it looks like it's time for us to make our first car, which is going to be great. So I've been skipping through a lot of the uh, messages that come up, but basically what we need to do is get through some of these menus. We need to pick a target demographic, and I think I'm going to try, as I said, convertible sports cars. Maybe not budget. Convertible budget? Yeah, maybe convertible sport is where we want to go. Now we could get the AI to generate us something, but I'm going to make it manually because I think that's more fun. Plus we'll do our facelifts manually and that'll allow me to come up with some funky designs hopefully. So let's make a car from scratch. When I normally play this game, I don't care much about a lot of things. <laughs> like I, I really am not concerned about the cost of the vehicle or the mileage or anything like that. We actually have to consider those things uh, because otherwise our vehicles are going to die. Also, I can't just go and start adding random options because we're going to need to build factory pieces to make those options. So things can get really expensive for one car if I do it wrong. Um, we are limited by the fact that it's 1975. We shouldn't pick something that's too old, and also we need to make sports cars. That is the idea, so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to see what we can do about that. I'm going to try coupes. Um, who knows how well this is going to go. Right, in terms of uh, sports car bodies that are convertible and also, uh, well within the realm of possibility for 1975. We don't have that much unless we dip back into the 60s, so I'm actually just gonna go straight for the newest body we can get. Uh, not sure what this is supposed to be, but it's a 70s wedge. Let's see if I can make it into something a little bit more interesting. It might be a Ferrari? I, I don't think we're gonna go that expensive though. So making it out of fiberglass would significantly reduce our production efficiency, and we would also need fiberglass injectors, RS, 
SMC injectors, whatever that is, I'm assuming something to do with fiberglass, that uh, is probably not going to fly. Let's go aluminum. I know that that is going to be high in engineering time, but um, I don't know. We'll see. Like the reality is that these cars are going to be more high margined, I think. Uh, they'll be less in terms of volume, but more in terms of profit per car. At least that's my goal. So let's go for a monocoque chassis and we'll go... If we do galvanize, that means we're going to have to buy galvanized like, parts for our factory. But let's just try corrosion resistant and make these a little bit higher class. Rear engine is pretty cool, but I think I'm going to go mid transverse. We're going to go rear wheel drive uh, with double wishbone on the front and the back. Hopefully this thing ends up being sporty and we haven't touched the quality sliders yet, but I'm going to have to come back to it for sure. Right, so we need to make an engine for this car. Seeing as it's 1975, I think we have no choice but to give it a V8. In fact, it's a transverse V8 rear-wheel drive, so maybe not the sportiest vehicle you've ever seen, but uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, let's go aluminum, try and get a little bit lightweight. That's going to be an <laughs> aloe foundry that we're going to have to add because of this. Uh, yes, this is getting expensive, and I want to make it a 5 liter because I just like V8s of that size. Maybe I should make it a 5.7 after my truck. So it's virtually square, uh, 5 liter V8, and push rods. Yes, old school. We could turbo it, but I think that's a little bit overkill for our first vehicle. It's probably better to keep things simple. Uh, I'm going to give it fuel injection, which is a mistake in the 70s, but uh, we'll go for that uh, performance mid. That's actually really tall. So uh, standard mid intake. Uh, hopefully it doesn't stick out of the body too much. Look at that drop in power right there. Max power 384 with our uh, and no catalytic converter, but 327 with, which kind of sucks. It looks like we're probably going to have to get some kind of muffler on there, which sucks as well. But I'm going to go straight through for the first and uh, none on the second. We'll see if that passes emissions. So the car makes 209.5 horsepower. Nothing crazy, but I did manage to get it. Oh, this is slightly glitched. But I did manage to get it to 11.7% efficiency, reasonable octane numbers. I think overall, again, I'm hoping to make it like buildable. <laughs> That's basically the goal. So it's going to be the uh, engine code is what I'm going to call the 5210. So it's a 5 liter, 210 horsepower, and it's the F8. <laughs> uh, we still have to give the car an actual name, which is going to be interesting because we need to be like giving trims and everything for it as well. Um, this first one though I think is just going to be sort of a mid model and then we'll make like a high trim and a low trim see if we can target some different areas. Actually now that I'm thinking about it we should totally try and make a super budget version with like a V6. That could be a lot of fun. <laughs> but first of all let's keep things simple so just so I don't fail the game too quickly. I'm going to keep the engine nice and uh, aluminum colored there. It actually doesn't look bad. Classic overhead cam. Perfect for what I'm after. And now it's time to make the actual car. Alright, so this is the fun part. This is the part that uh, we have done many, many times in the channel. Seeing as this is the 70s, I think it's important to... Uh, well, the styling doesn't really matter. <laughs> Cars in the 70s were all over the place. Let's just make something that looks decent. As for colors, I'm not 100% sure how that works. I think uh, the car will just always be one color, which is unfortunate. It would be cool to see, like, to have a colors simulation in this where it, like, you can put the car in different colors and then it costs you more to have it in more colors, but it may be some people like blue better and some people like red better or something like that, so you can see how many uh, of each type of car sells or each color of car sells. I know that's an added layer of simulation that probably isn't necessary, but it sounds kind of cool. So the engine is already in the car. <laughs> Usually you have to go through some of these steps before you can get it to show up in there, but I, I mean, there's only one option here. We're going rear wheel drive or death. No other choices. That being said, it's time that I design something, and uh, obviously it's going to have pop-up headlights. <laughs> Let's just slap those on right now. I'm not going to focus too, too much on the car's design, but it, it'll just be a very basic one, um, just to have something that looks reasonable. Um, the fact is that we I'm mostly doing this video because I'm interested in the campaign portion of things. I have designed many cars in this game, but none 
have been for the campaign. We'll see how well my first one does. If you press control, you do get a cool little project map thing so you can see where you're at. Uh, basically, I still have to design the trim and then uh, we're gonna need to get to the other stuff, um, but this will hopefully guide me through. Oh, by the way, this thing is ugly as heck at the moment. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, something happened and it's horrible. So one of the things I need to do is come up with a company logo. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly grab some stuff out of here. Um, is any of this stuff true? Or, I, we actually do have EFI, so I'm gonna put that on here just for fun. Okay, it has been a, a little while and I've been working on this car. Uh, so I made it the Zebra, that's the car model name. Trim name is SE. We're gonna go for like an S-based model of trim. So SE would be special edition, but then we'll just have the S and then we're gonna have the ST as well, which is like the fancy turbo edition. Um, because, because, also 5.0 EFI, yeah, we're gonna put the engine code on the back of it, basically. 5.0 liter with the EFI, so fairly interesting vehicle is what I'm thinking. Very simple design, but I think it's reasonable. I like the numbers on the back and stuff. I haven't picked out the badge yet, but I'm hoping there's a horse in here somewhere. It looks like there's a few. <laughs> there looks to be a gazelle, so maybe that'll work. We could go for some uh, mythology here, centaur. Cyclops, Medusa, <laughs> uh, okay maybe we'll skip Medusa. Naturally our logo is going to be this horse uh, because yeah I mean this is the zebra but I figure that every single one of my vehicles at Fluxington Motor Cars is going to be named after some kind of horse. Alright the drivetrain, uh, this is going to be a luxury vehicle so to make it manual might be a problem. Um, yikes. I see that stat on the bottom, it says familiarity, words, I can't pronounce them, but it's at 0% for both of these, so I don't know what to think about that. Let's go 5 speed, uh, make it a little bit more drivable perhaps. Yeah, this is not your average big American boat, uh, it's actually um, <laughs> whatever country this is from, I guess it's being made in that country too, I'm not sure. I'm gonna hit it up with some 245s on the back and 245s on the front. Actually, you know what? Let's drop that to 235 on both. We'll see how the handling goes with that, and then we'll crank it up even higher for the sport version. I don't think anybody is gonna buy the sport version because in order to make a profit on it, I'm probably gonna have to really crank up the uh, cost of it. But anyway, I think 16 inch wheels, like th these are pretty much perfect size for this. So, yeah, I mean, if anything, we could drop it down to 15, but, or that's 14, but 15, 15 doesn't look too bad actually, maybe we'll go with that. It is the 70s, keep that in mind. I'm gonna go vented discs on the front, solid discs on the back. We can come back to the brake graph later because we don't have anything there yet. No uh, under tray or anything fancy like that. And uh, it's going to be, let's see, an automatic soft top. So slightly fancy stuff here. I wanna give this car a premium interior and we'll go for a premium eight track as well. So some of the expensive stuff in this version. Safety is pretty important. I think we should probably crank it up just to keep these cars reasonably uh, marketable. <laughs> if it's like a tin can, like a Geo or something, I don't know how well that's gonna sell. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess that's probably good. Not sure what I wanna do here. This stuff is very expensive. Like, the reality is that it weighs a decent amount. I um, think I'm going to just turn it up a little bit so it's a little heavier. Comfort will go up, but uh, sportiness goes down. So, yeah, we'll see. Luxury trim, I'm not sure. Weight distribution is extremely important because this thing is rear-wheel drive. Um, we might have to come back to this. Standard suspension, gas, mono tube is all we get out of here. And uh, brake fade, oh boy, lots of brake problems. Lots of problems. So we're trying to hit the convertible sport demographic and we're actually not doing too badly. That's a 25% match, <laughs> oh goodness. Maybe we're gonna end up going for the light sport budget because we seem to be 57 on that one. Everything else is not really in line, hmm. Yeah, I've just been looking at these charts here. I'm not 100% sure how to read them. Normalized desirability at 240%. I'm assuming that just means that the car is actually 
desirable by this specific demographic, which is a good thing. But then if we go over here in muscle premium, it's only 64% as an example. But the demographic match is significantly higher on the, <laughs> on the muscle premium, so I'm not sure, again, how to read those. Uh, that being said, I basically just slapped a sport preset on it, and I'm going to have to go back through this. So I put the weight distribution down quite a bit here, uh, <laughs> down to the rear, I should say, uh, because the car is rear-engined, and uh, that has increased our demographic match pretty much across the board, so seems like that was one of the big issues. Strong oversteer is our biggest problem at the moment, so that's going to be fun to try and alleviate. Shrinking the front tires down to 205, which is very thin, uh, it seems to actually be doing the trick in order to bring this back into a reasonable area, but it's pretty important that we actually nail this, so I'm going to have to set aside my worries and just kind of go for it. 245s on the back, 200 in the front. Very awkward sizing, but uh, if it works, it works. Still says the front tires are wide, which is, which is interesting. I'm not sure what I think about that, to be honest, but it's going to end up with some tiny, tiny wheels on the front if we really follow that. Like, 175s, yikes. All right, I guess that's how it's going to have to be. A little bit awkward in terms of realism, but uh, that's the way the game wants it, so let's leave it just like that. Okay, so the Zebra SE with the F850210. <laughs> I'm not able to say my own car names. Is here and ready to be sent off to the market, uh, except I'm going to quickly save the game. And uh, yeah, this is the part where things get weird because... I don't really know what I'm doing yet, <laughs> but we officially have one car. Okay, so we can open this thing again to edit it if we want to, or uh, we can, yeah, the desirability is really high for that, so that is a good start. What I'm gonna do is jump to the clone thing and we're gonna make what I'm calling the S, uh, using the same engine, but this one is going to be a cheaper variant. So let's just knock some stuff off. So one thing that I forgot to do was look at this chart here. I remember Kill Rob saying that this is uh, kind of important, but basically it's showing both of our cars and the market share that is anticipated for them. The one that I'm targeting here is uh, Convertible Sport, but it seems like muscle might be a bigger bubble, which is fine with me. Um, but you can see it's pretty much 50-50 here. It's actually 51-51. So apparently Convertible Sport has 102% possibilities, um, but We'll see what happens once I knock the prices down. 18.4k is an interesting one. I want to see, well, how much money are we going to make on that? <laughs> That's the real question. Is that going to even give me a, uh, a profit? Oh, it actually is only going to cost $8,000 to build the car at least in its current state. Um, once we get the factory going, obviously that's going to go up quite a bit higher though. So not bad. And then we're going to try and sell them for 18.4K at the moment. We'll see how I do that. I might just lower them to the 15K range and then the next one will be 2, 3K less. So let's drop some stuff off of this trim in order to make it a slightly different variant. First thing I'm going to do just to differentiate it is I'm going to change the color to a, hmm, just something to help us denote between the two of them. So it'll be like a sea green, uh, a little bit easier to know. In terms of the basic car stuff, like uh, obviously the engine is gonna stay the same and all that, but I'm just gonna change some small things to try and make this S version a little bit cheaper. First thing I'm gonna do is knock it down to a four speed. Uh, which is probably going to change the gearing. You know, I didn't mess with the gearing at all in that last one, so uh, whoops, 50% <laughs> spacing or 50 spacing. Yikes, it might be a horrible car, but I'm not going to test it, so I don't know. The S version is going to get medium compound tires. It's also going to get a significantly reduced uh, size to them, I think. I'm going to go down to 14s, <laughs> which is small, and then... Uh, yeah, I want to try and shrink this without killing it. So this one being a more budget option means that uh, the wheel should probably be less uh, interesting, I guess. So we'll just make them these style. And then um, I think other than that, I'm going to cut the spoiler off this variant. And obviously it can't say SE anymore. It's just going to say S. 
and it'll keep the same engine because I don't want to make a new factory for a different engine. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Let's knock it down to two piston brakes at the front, and I think it'll still be fine. And it's going to get drums on the back, which means it's still fine. Aerodynamics still has nothing. Interior, I'm going to make it a manual soft top. Standard interior, standard 8-track, I guess that's probably the biggest difference. Is it's not going to be as fancy anymore, which is fine. Standard safety, actually, you know what, let's, let's give all of our cars an advanced safety setup just to make sure that they stay reasonable. <laughs> we don't want it to just explode and die and then kill everybody, although that would be funny. Drop down the suspension to twin tube instead of gas, and this thing is probably, yeah, it's significantly less in the price, which is good. Uh, and it's actually predicted to sell 400 cars. Not bad. <laughs> not as much as our luxury version, which is to be expected, but not bad. I'm wondering if I've made enough uh, sacrifices with this one, because maybe it's possible that it should be... Uh, just like lightened up a lot. Perhaps that could help it. Again, just trying to make it as cheap as reasonably possible. Okay, so that's 14.5K and it stole a few more sales from the convertible sport model, which is fine with me. And yeah, that means that we actually have uh, two runner-ups here for the muscle category. Now I could saturate it further and make another one and uh, I don't wanna do that just yet. I think we're gonna save the luxury trim for our facelift. Uh, when we get there. <laughs> so save the game again, make sure that it doesn't disappear on me, and that is going to be that. So this is a lighter version with smaller wheels, basically less sporty features and no luxury interior or anything like that. Same engine though, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a ripper. It's got a three speed or a four speed instead of a five speed to try and save some money, um, but other than that, mechanically, it's basically identical. It's probably the one to get for this model, I would think, but people tend to like features. All right, let's see how this works. Okay, so we have two cars. Uh, we have $1 billion from the looks of things, and our company's valued at $1.28 billion. When Kilrob was starting this, I think he had $100 million. So I have a lot more money than what he was basing himself uh, with. So I think it's important to consider that... Uh, I'm playing on easy mode. Other than that though, it's also important to try and get some of this stuff down. I'm going to knock down the tooling costs to try and save us some money. With these things filling up, I'm not 100% sure what that means. A lot of this stuff is a little bit confusing. So we have modifiers, all percentages, we have base values. This is time, I'm assuming in months. Engineering costs here, production units. So if I lower this, the production units aren't changing but the costs are going down. Uh, so we could just have this basically all the way on manual. Uh, so it doesn't seem to be making much of a difference. I'm gonna leave it at like 30 and see how, what happens with that. Let's make our process a little bit, uh, a little bit more optimized. It's gonna cost money, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Reliability, I wouldn't mind having a touch extra of that too so the thing doesn't die and then uh, we'll just leave everything else 50 50. all right let's see what happens okay so we got a warning here it says engine project has not been set to ready to sign it off uh, so basically we have to sign off on it if that's possible i guess that brought me to a different menu here because uh, it's just showing me this setup for the engine as well um, so we're gonna go drop this down again to 30 and uh, I'll just leave these things up as well. So the engine setup, the engine factory is basically going to rival the uh, <laughs> the other building factory to to the exact. Actually, we need to make a an aluminum addition to our factory, which is important. Eighty million dollars, yikes! But medium is how it's going to be. This is a cool little setup here. We can actually see what it looks like. I like having these little visuals so that the game isn't entirely a spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of entirely spreadsheet games. So yeah, we've got an iron foundry, we've got the aluminum foundry, which is important. Uh, this is 20 million. We have money to spare. Should we blow it all on this factory? <laughs> Probably not. But we're under the... Well, the, the matching load and the predicted load are good here, so that, that's a good thing. So this is what our factory looks like. We can actually see it in semi-3D, which is cool. Well, it is 3D, it's just really small. 
Uh, but I like to be able to see it like that. It'd be cool if in the final version, when you click this stuff, it like pops up something new everywhere. But uh, we can also go large if we really wanted to. I just don't think that it's worth it to spend all that money. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of money. Let's just start with medium. We'll become a medium-sized company uh, with the aluminum foundry, iron foundry, and that's it for now. <laughs> Let's see if we can at least be profitable before I start adding random stuff to this. This is going to be the engine factory from the looks of things, and uh, there's a graph here that I honestly don't 100% understand yet, but we have quality distribution as the years go on. It looks like tooling wears down or something, which is why this gets worse. Uh, but our build quality, you can see, is uh, improving. <laughs> is this an improvement, 150%? But uh, yeah, I don't know how this is gonna work. We have no shift controls. Worker wages and quality, we'll just leave it 50-50 and move on. Okay, so we have more graphs. The basic idea of the campaign so far just seems to be uh, graphs. <laughs> so the most of it seems to be material. We got tooling, we got engineering, which is only $100. Apparently we don't pay engineers in this company. And uh, engine labor, which is getting a lot more than engineers. Everything here seems fine. Again, I'm not really sure what to tweak, so I'm just going to continue. And I'm going to keep that engine factory going. I'm going to turn this into a Dodge and make the Hemi for like 25 years. Okay, so apparently I forgot to tick something off there and it didn't want me to progress, but I figured it out and we are here in uh, the production setup, pre-production. Again, not 100% sure what to do with this, but uh, I guess this gives us a an idea of when we'd actually break even on the engine design stuff, so we'll just leave that where it is. <clears throat> Everything seems to be good, and it's time to make more factories because now we need to make a car factory. So this is car factory number one. Uh, we have steel presses, which is necessary for this. This SMC injector was the one that we would need in order to make the car fiberglass, but it does look like we're going to need handmade parts for my design, which is unfortunate. I'm not gonna get anything extra here. I think I'm just gonna jump forwards. Uh, we do have the option to make it multiple buildings from the looks of things in our factory, but I'm just gonna keep it super basic for now. These are our two cars. Both of these need materials that are expensive, like aluminum, because the body is made out of aluminum. But when it comes to shifts, uh, we got I don't know, we can do minimum half shift, maximum two shifts. We don't wanna to go too crazy. Like if we make too many cars then and they don't sell, then <laughs> we're kinda of toast. So let's just uh, let's just leave it at two. Actually, maybe let's target one, one shift targeted and then max 1.5, there we go. So we won't blow too much money. And from the looks of things, we have $16,000 of possible profit from these cars, which is a decent amount of money, really. That's uh, quite good. Um, I think we might be charging too much. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. If I can adjust it somewhere, that would be great. But uh, if we can complete the design of our factory, then that'll be that. Uh, okay, so the game has just loaded in. Wow. Wow, <laughs> we're actually doing really well. Somehow I managed to make it, so year five, we are all profit. Let's jump over to year one and see what it looks like. Okay, year one, we are losing $300 million. <laughs> oh no. Okay, year two, let's see. Okay, year two, we're losing less and less money. I hope our billion is enough to cover this, by the way. I did not do the math on it. If I set this based on the average budget convertible sport buyers in this region, I'm very curious to see how much money we'd actually make. 10% profit, but we would actually make money in year one. That's probably for the better. It takes a long time to load this up, but it looks like if we discount our SE trim fairly significantly, um, we will be making a lot of money. So. That's definitely an important thing to think about. I'm gonna discount the S trim, and I suspect that uh, we should be really raking in some cash. Yikes, it takes a while to load that up. Uh, actually, it looks like not so much. So the S is our cheaper model, which isn't really doing anything for me at this point. I'm gonna put this to 25%, and I'm gonna put this also to 25%, and we'll see how that works. 
not amazing to be honest with you like the reality is we want to make more money on our top trim car and that is also the most desirable one too the but the base one is basically there just to say hey uh there's a better deal <laughs> and then they pay a couple thousand more for a couple more options but it makes us a ton more money cough cough that's what literally every car manufacturer does do you think it really costs a hundred extra grand to make a limited f-150 Okay, there we go. I've got it. We are making money in the first year, first month of the first year, in fact. So I think that's going to be my setup. 25% margin on the SE and only 15% on the S, which makes it pretty much our highest seller. Uh, but that's fine because it's making us money. So let's go forwards. Right, so we have our two cars, a decent amount of money each, about 3.21k earnings from this, 5.98 earnings from that. Uh, yeah, I guess we may as well just complete the design <laughs> and hope for the best. It's time to... actually, we don't need a loan. Yeah, we, we're going to have enough money for sure. So this is only 183 million. I probably could have made a lot more cars. And let's sign off on the selected projects, uh, and I'm not taking out the loan. We have officially started the actual game. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's been an hour in real life. Admittedly, a bunch of that time was uh, me designing the car, probably a little bit too aggressively, but we're in the market now, let's go. So what we have to do is hit play, and uh, we're officially going to be watching as our car goes through the months, uh, and our production continues. Um, currently we've lost a bunch of money, but I want to see this go through a couple months to see how this does. So I'm assuming that's five months have passed at the moment and we have made a million dollars. Can't complain about that. That's without me marketing at all. Uh, keep that in mind. So it's probably important that uh, we market our um, prestige, maybe. <laughs> uh... Yeah, let's, let's put one point in prestige marketing, another point in sportiness, another one in luxury. So we're kind of just setting a goal here to, to have things be active. We're actually at 20% in all of these places, but having a little bit of marketing is probably a good thing. And then research and development, we actually have plus two funding in everything just by default. So that is getting us these options, which is good. We want to, at least for the future, have... Uh, possibility of getting better tech um but yeah this is the actual tree so we know when everything kind of hops into the game and so there you have it i've actually made a successful vehicle playing on easy mode so not really much to say there but uh yeah i've i've officially made a semi-successful vehicle it's still 1975 and obviously we have a little bit of marketing cost there now but everything seems to be going pretty okay I kind of figure I just let this sit for a bit and see what happens. Once it gets to 1976, it's probably time to do a facelift. And then, I don't know, who knows from there. Fluxington Motors has a lot of different possibilities. But uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, don't take my uh, my look of things in this game uh, too seriously. <laughs> if you want to see somebody who actually knows what they're doing, just go to the Automations uh, YouTube channel by itself and... You'll be able to see some some people who actually know what they're doing with the campaign but from what i can see so far it seems to be pretty well developed like there's a lot of stuff going on there's a lot to learn in this spreadsheet simulator of all spreadsheet simulators and i'm enjoying what i'm seeing so far it's just uh yeah it's definitely a bit of a steep learning curve but <laughs> i've never been good at learning games very quickly so i can't say too much about that but yeah, with that, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll try to cut it down so it's not too crazy long for you. But this has been a look at the automation campaign, at least as it currently sits in 4.2 on the day of June 17th, because I'm sure it's going to change soon. So yeah, don't get too invested in your campaign because you never know when they're going to need to wipe the saves to get things updated. But anyways, appreciate you guys watching this video. I'll see you again in the next one. And uh, yeah, look for another video this week on BeamNG because uh, I wanted to do two. So yeah, see you guys again soon. Big thank you to those who have chosen to support this channel via the join button. We have Overlord, QT Bear, Terry01, Jay Pope, Davis Heister, The German Dude, Nat64, Synlab, Jared Grigg, Goofy Plays, Badger, Phoenix Shark, Baja Blast, 
and you potentially just hit that join button and you'll join this crew i'd appreciate it a lot and uh yeah man things are things are still going it's been an interesting last couple of weeks since <laughs> stuff has been busy but you know that never changes so yeah <laughs> thanks guys see you again soon <laughs>